AMD finally shipping out the thing that I want to see. Rivian deciding to pull a little sneaky pricing and then sneaking on back to where they were. And Sony sneaking a few console prototypes here to the US. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you sit back, relax, and enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off today talking about the chip that I think a lot of people are excited for, which is the 5800X3D. In an earlier episode of Hot News this week, we talked about the fact that Gigabyte was rolling out BIOS support for this chip, and now we have more information coming out from well-known leakers with regards to this first 3D vCache consumer chip, and that is that it is shipping out from AMD's factories and should potentially be on the market by the end of the month, which is more details than AMD has given us. They showed this thing off at CES, showing us that it performs really well. It can beat an i9-12900K, at least according to their benchmarks, but we had no pricing nor any release date, which we still don't have either of those officially, but it's good to know, especially with the Gigabyte BIOS support rolling out, that this chip should be coming soon. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Let me know if you're interested in it down below in the comments, but we're also looking to get 3D vCache versions of AMD's Epic chips. The Milan X processors are supposed to be shipping out sometime soon as well. And to further substantiate all of this, it looks like CPU-Z is adding CPU support for the AMD chip, as well as the rumored i9 12900KS. Actually, I'm not even 100% sure if that's rumored or if Intel confirmed it. I think they confirmed it. They, they announced that at CES, didn't they? But the 12900KS and the 5800X 3D being added into CPU-Z support. So it does look like the wheels are churning. We're getting some more CPU competition. Let me know which one would you rather buy, this 12900KS or the 5800X 3D? Your choice. Yes. <laughs> Both of them, got it. I'm paying you too much. I'm just mean today, I'm sorry. I didn't get much sleep last night. Speaking of mean things, let's talk about how Newegg apparently abandoned their Newegg shuffle, at least according to time, which the last time that Newegg held a shuffle was on February 22nd, right before, you know, kinda, all of the things went down with Gamers Nexus, and allegedly I was involved in this somehow as well. We released videos about how Newegg is not necessarily holding up to the best business practices, but in reaching out, Tom's Hardware found out that Newegg is planning on reestablishing the shuffle from Newegg when it comes to just putting a lottery entry into trying to potentially buy parts that are out there. Do you like Newegg shuffles? Do you, have you gotten anything from them? Do you have any suggestions on how they could potentially improve it? Especially after the conclusion of Gamers Nexus, this is Saga with Newegg. It does appear at least like they're maybe listening to what consumers want, even if they're not gonna fully implement it. Maybe we could try to steer them in the right direction. How would you like to see Newegg make the shuffle more consumer facing if and when it does return? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know about some of the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet. Let's get into the UFD deals. You can go to the website, which is linked in the video description. Reese is updating it every day to give you the hottest tech deals that are out there. We got some monitor deals that are out happening. Alienware's 360 hertz monitor is down 27% to be at $461. But if you don't want to spend that much, they also have their 27 inch 1080p 240 hertz monitor going for $330, which is a discount of 21%. But we got a higher percentage discount in the Sennheiser HD 560S over ear headphones. They're going for $143, which is a 28% discount. Some high expensive deals, but good deals nonetheless. So check out UFD deals linked in the video description. And is crypto on a deal? It maybe is the typical crypto source that I use for crypto stunks. Uh, it, it just wouldn't load. So here we are, coin market cap, Bitcoin, down 4% on the day to sit at $42,100. You can see that right around 9 a.m. Eastern time, it just started to fall off its cliff and it's not necessarily holding on to all of the games that it saw earlier this week. Ethereum also dropping 4.6% to be at $2,800. Dogecoin down 2.7% to sit at 12 Eight cents. But while crypto is down, Rivian was trying to go up with its pricing on its R1T and R1S vehicles. These electric vehicles have been hotly anticipated as a good rival to Tesla. And it turns out that there's supply chain issues. So they had to jack up the price on some of them by up to 20%, increasing the price by $20,000, making the R1T for some people going from $75,000 all the way up to 92,700. Rivian's chief growth officer saying that it's supply chain complexity issues with all of that. However, 
However, Rivian didn't just increase the price when it came to the new orders, but they also increased the price on people who had pre-ordered the vehicles, which goes against established trends that Tesla at least set in the market, where if they increase the price, you've locked it in with your pre-order. My Cybertruck pre-order is sitting at whatever price I locked it in at with its full self-driving beta. And at least I'm not particularly worried that they're gonna drop me on that. Although they have like dropped like the Model S Plaid Plus. However, they haven't typically charged more than what they established when you first pre-order. Rivian not really following with that, but after it got a lot of attention, especially with YouTubers calling it out, Rivian backpedaled and then made it so that the people who have pre-ordered it before March 1st will keep the original price and then anybody who wants to order it from now on would actually get the more increased price, which does make a lot of sense, at least in my opinion. I think it's a good move by Rivian to not apply the price increase to people who have pre-ordered show support before the vehicles were even like out in the open and people weren't able to see what it was. That's the better consumer facing strategy. I'm glad to see that they're moving forward with that one. And Sony looks to be moving forward with some consoles or at least console prototypes. We're not quite sure. There's some documentation floating out there that Sony has shipped a whole bunch of things up to 1500 pounds of shipments to different places over across the globe. January 22nd, there's 4,700 kilograms of prototype stuff shipped from Japan to Oakland, California with a whole bunch of other stuff being shipped as well. And it looks like according to the code numbers that this is potentially some sort of console prototype. Some speculation is that it could potentially be the early samples of the PS5 Pro dev kits that are out there. My hypothesis would be that it's likely the PSVR 2, especially as Sony has been showing that off more and more recently, it being a PSVR 2 prototype or a dev kit for game developers to actually start getting games ready for the higher end VR headset. That would make a lot of sense to me. But what do you think the console prototype is? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know that I want you to have a good weekend because this episode of Hot News is over. Be sure to stay tuned for tomorrow. We're gonna have twin this week in news where we go over all of the hottest tech news that took place this week. See you tomorrow.